Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and I've been spending the past month with the all-new Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. I have a particular attachment to this bike because for three years I owned a 2019 Suzuki V-Strom 650 Touring. Touring Adventure, they kind of blended the lines between those two trims for a while, but it was the most adventure you could get in a V-Strom 650 back in 2019 model year. And I unfortunately got rid of that bike in order to make the move here to California. So I want to kind of treat this review as both a, a review of the 800DE, but also a little bit of recap on my ownership with the V-Strom 650 and a compare and contrast, a, a previous owner's perspective, if you will, on what this bike means and the fact that Suzuki does still sell the V-Strom 650 alongside the new 800, then there's also the 1050 as well. So we're gonna try to cram a lot in here and I'm, I'm gonna do my best to not ramble on and, and include a bunch of unnecessary stuff, but I should tell you that we are gonna head down to the coast today. There's apparently some high tides. We're gonna go see if we can see any cool flooding or big waves or anything like that. So it should be a good adventure for the V-Strom. Quick overview before we hop on the bike. The V-Strom 800DE is now a full-fledged middleweight adventure bike. No longer is it kind of this uh, lukewarm attempt the way the previous one was, where yeah, they threw on, threw on some spoked wheels, but you know, just basic suspension adjustments and not a ton of power for hauling two people and a bunch of gear. This 800 model really splits that nice difference between still being about 500 pounds, but having more power, more, excited, more excitable type of power, and a really great suspension and overall the fit finish and feel of a premium bike you really do feel like you're getting uh you're, you're not making compromises anymore that's what i've really enjoyed about the new 800 here and for those of you who are very familiar with the motorcycle landscape you'll know that this bike has been winning a lot of accolades over the last year or so i mean it, it really is a knockout sort of machine. That's not to say it's perfect from my perspective. We are going to talk about some of the things that I don't particularly care for about it, but I, I would be remiss to say that this is not a really fantastic bike that can do quite a lot of things, a big spectrum. I've been quite happy with it. This one, as you're seeing it, is this DE model. You can get them a little bit more basic for a little bit less money. You can get them without the spoked wheels and the, the side cases, which are off on this one. I like riding around when I don't have to put anything in them. I take them off. It's very easy to do. You just throw the key in there and then they pop off. However, I should point out that unlike my V-Strom 650, the cases have a separate key from the, from the, from the main key. Now on, on my V-Strom, the 2019 650 Adventure, I was able to use the same key for b both of my two side cases as well. I don't know why this one has a separate key on this 800DE model, but either way, you pop it in there, you flip the key, you can take the cases right off. You just have these brackets left over. This one, as you're seeing it, about $14,000, give or take. A few different colors you can choose from depending on which model you're getting. I think this is a nice blend of a little bit of color splash in there while also looking sleek in the predominantly black setup. And I like the gold accents as well, or bronze, or however you want to refer to them. Pretty cool. Pretty solid skid plate on here as well, but pretty uh, street-oriented tires. I think these are about 85-15 on-road, off-road sort of tires. So if you're going to be taking it off-road at all regularly, you're going to want to throw on a little bit of knobbier tires. I should say, Alyssa went for a ride with me last weekend, and she was not particularly comfortable on the seat. So compared to the outgoing 650 model, she said the seat was much harder, and she was pretty experienced. She went on some long rides on the V-Strom 650 and never got uncomfortable, so I, I was a bit disappointed to hear she didn't care for this one. Big technology suite, just one big TFT display. I do miss my analog tachometer. It was one of the things I really liked about the, the 650 is having a, a proper analog tach. I mean, this one still emulates an analog tachometer, but it just isn't quite the same. I haven't, I mean, it's not the end of the world when you're riding. It's just one of those nice things to have, but it does tell you a whole lot of information, engine temp and air temp and gear and fuel. I mean, all the stuff you'd expect, but also you can adjust your traction control levels, your power levels and your ABS levels. You can disable the rear traction control for doing off-road business. Still have that Suzuki one press to start. You don't technically have to hold the starter button down and you also have the the stall support, which kind of bumps the revs up a little bit as you go to let out the clutch. It makes for just really easy, low speed riding. I also have the Honda Transalp at the same time as this bike, and I did shoot a comparison between the two, and 
the Suzuki does have a lot of uh, kind of nice to have riding aids kind of just making life a little bit easier that the Honda doesn't. Interestingly they bothered to give us a quick shifter works with both up and down shifting but we don't have any sort of cruise control and if I were going to have one or the other I would so much rather have cruise control over a quick shifter. I mean quick shifter is definitely nice when you're riding hard banging through gears or on the other end when you're riding really lazy and you just want to uh, be able to shift without pulling in the clutch but I, <laughs> if it's not gonna be full automatic I really don't mind reaching up for the clutch anyway and if, if you kind of know what you're doing and how you're riding you can sort of do your own quick shifting on a normal bike you can um, let off the, the throttle just right and just kind of quick shift on your own clutchless shift if you will So it's disappointing to me that even though we do have an electronic throttle now, we don't have any sort of cruise control. The engine! This is no longer a V-twin. This is a parallel twin. Fortunately it does have the 270 degree crank, which gives it a little bit more interesting character compared to a 180 degree crank parallel twin that you might get in something like a Kawasaki Versus or a Ninja 650. But I assume it has something to do with Euro 5 regulations. This motor is too quiet. I really need some sort of aftermarket exhaust on here to liven this bike up. And I know that it's too quiet because, again, I've had the Honda Transalp right alongside me, a very similar motor, also a 270 degree crank parallel twin. And when you're at speed, you can barely hear this engine. Even when you're way up at redline that's screaming, it's so refined that you, you pretty much just get wind noise. There's no sort of exciting intake sound or exhaust sound. So I'd like to hear how this would sound with a nice aftermarket exhaust on there. You'd obviously drop some weight as well. But outside of being remarkably um, calm, this motor does have just the perfect sweet spot of power for the weight of this bike. I love being able to drop a few gears and really twist it. For, for me, the sweet spot of power is being able to give a full right hand twist and not be immediately breaking every speed limit in the country. I want to be able to shift through a few gears and really feel like I'm using the full potential of my motor and bringing it all the way out to redline before I have to lay off because I'm just going triple digits. For me, this engine very nicely cuts the difference between uh, having just enough power to be able to have two people on and, and still accelerate hard, load it up with gear, really feel like, like an exciting bike, but then at the same time also be low enough that you can fully use it and, and uh, enjoy everything Suzuki's giving with you here in this, this powertrain. So from a, from a power perspective and an efficiency perspective, I've been pretty happy with the bike. On our fuel economy testing, we got uh, high 40s in our uh, commuter fuel economy test that's pretty decent considering the saddlebags on there i like the kind of off idle rev character of the engine but you don't really feel any of that rocking sensation being a parallel twin and uh yeah just, it needs to be woken up just a little bit i will say in contrast to the 650 motor this engine doesn't fall off above 6500 rpm the way the 650 motor did and it also has a much lower gearing than the 650 motor. So at the, with the 650, when I was cruising at about 70 miles per hour, I was way up, I think about 65, 6,000, 6,500 RPM or so. And, and the motor was singing along. I mean, you certainly heard it. This engine, the combination of its power band and its gearing, you have a lot more power up top to use when you need it, but it also gears itself down so that you're not uh, singing at highway speeds, if you will. You're not buzzing yourself the way you were on the 650 East Drum. So we'll, we'll get on the highway here in just a sec. I'll demonstrate that to you. But overall, the, the power band is just more usable and more enjoyable all across. All across the way. Great on-throttle, off-throttle control. We do have the three different drive modes, or power modes, I should say, A, B, and C. I've been enjoying it most in B. I find A to be too manic. It's too much acceleration as soon as you start to twist the throttle. 
but B feels the most natural to where when I'm twisting the throttle it, it feels like how much it should be twisted. Right here, uh, the Speedo Elite reads a few low. The Speedo reads a few high, but if I get up to about 73, 74, we're at about 5,300 RPM. It's, you, you don't even notice the engine spinning. All you get is air. Quick shift down. Lay it over in the corner here. Don't have to worry about peg scrapage. We got a whole lot of ground clearance. Like I said, you can use the power. I'm shifting full throttle there into fifth gear, and then I bring it back down from there. But I'm sure you can tell that I mean, you're hearing what I hear in my helmet. I don't hear much from this engine once I get up above speed, and these quick shift down shifts, I mean, you're just barely hearing this engine. And some people are going to appreciate that. It's a fantastic powertrain, it really is. The windshield, like the 650, is three-way adjustable, but this was a middle finger to me from Suzuki. We were out on our uh, long uh, ride last weekend, and the windshield was at the middle adjustment. And I was like, all right, well, I'd like to bump it up because I'm, I get a lot of dirty air on me. It's very loud to ride this around. At five foot 10, I was getting a lot of buffeting. Not even really buffeting, but just dirty air hitting me from the windshield. And I, I looked under the seat for a toolkit in order to adjust the windshield, and there are two tools. One is an Allen key that fits these side panels, and the other was a two-way flat and Phillips head screwdriver. No Allen key for adjusting the windshield, so you have to either carry that on you somehow, build up your own toolkit to stuff under the seat, or you got to do it when you're at home. Now that I have raised it up to the higher level, I'm getting a little bit more coverage, but you're still, I mean, look at the size of that windshield. It's not doing much. I'm still getting a lot of wind hitting me in the side of my torso and the top part of my helmet. So one of the first things I'd do if I owned one of these is I would either, one, get some sort of super tiny windshield that pretty much just covers the gauge cluster and that's it, and maybe remove that stock bracket or something. Or I'd get, more realistically, I'd get a big thing like the Givi wind foil that I had in the 650. Then you get easy, uh, quick adjustment and a lot of air coverage. If you do live in an area where you can lane filter or split, keep in mind that the V-Strom 800 has a remarkably wide set of handlebars. You can see here I'm coming through these cars and I'm making it through okay, but I find myself being really nervous to make some of these splits, especially compared to something like the Honda that we also have right now. And I also find myself, if you sit on the bike, you might notice it's you just feel very broad chested as your arms are pretty far out. and I don't know, it's it's not really a, a good or a bad thing outside of, like I said, makes the whole bike wider and a little bit sketchier for getting in between those cars. However, if you are going to have the side cases on anyway, those are still going to be wider than your handlebars by just an inch or two. So, uh, moot point at that point. I don't particularly love how the new 800 runs on 90 octane or more. That was one of the things that swayed my decision toward a V-Strom 650 over the V-Strom 1000 back then was that I could run the 650 on regular fuel and maybe if you live in an area where premiums only 30 cents more expensive per gallon like it is out here in California really not that big of a deal but when I lived out in Michigan it was upward of a dollar more expensive per gallon so at that point I was like oh man yeah it is not worth spending that extra money uh, to get a bike that I'm just riding around I really appreciated that the 650 ran on 87 octane, and there are definitely other bikes in this class that run fine on 87 octane. So it's a little bit of a bummer that we've got 91 on here. I know there are a lot of people who just put 91 in their bikes regardless. Something to consider. If you're someone coming off of a different style motorcycle, you should be aware that riding a more adventure sort of bike like this yields more reserved riding character. This is a 21 inch wheel up front, so it doesn't have the the quick flickability. I really gotta push my body into swashing it back and forth like that. 
and that's the nature of this sort of bike. You want a larger wheel diameter to get over objects when you're going off-road, and it makes it so when you're just cruising around, it's very relaxed and casual. You don't have a manic sort of feel. But the the the, the converse side of that is you can't change directions as quickly. So something to be aware of if you're coming off of something more like a standard or a naked bike or a sporty oriented bike is that this is a very reserved riding experience. And it does fit the ethos that Suzuki is building for this bike. The V-Strom 650 always felt like a motorcycle that, like I said at the beginning, was a lukewarm ADV. It was really more of just a, a very comfortable commuter sort of version of the SV650. It used essentially the same frame, same motor, same transmission, everything, and it was just a bike you could get on and, and ride all day, be comfortable. Yeah, you could technically take it off-road, but uh, it wasn't really uh, very well fit for it just based on its chassis and suspension. This is a different bike. This bike feels like you're getting a, an entirely fit finished adventure bike product and a lot of people are really looking for that from Suzuki. You didn't want to have to step all the way up to the V-Strom 1050 to feel like you're getting a, a serious ADV bike experience. Now you've got that in the middleweight category. You've got the tech suite, you've got the suspension, you've got the engine performance, it's all there. And that's what surprises me even more that we don't have cruise control. Why? Suzuki makes it, they put it on the GSX, uh, the G GSX S1000 GT, they put it on multiple bikes of theirs. So why not put it on a bike like this? And uh, I understand if maybe you didn't want it on the very basic one to, to get a reason for people to spend a little extra money, but this is the 800 DE. This is the one that people are going to be taking on long adventure sort of rides. So we, we've got an electronic throttle here, just give us cruise control and then you literally have the entire package. Part of me feels like they did it just so that they can add it in in another year or two and then give people even more reason to buy them. All right, here's a little bit more of a scenic spot, eh? See if we can get somewhere and try to catch Catch a view of some of these waves. I also realized I hadn't mentioned the brakes on the V-Strom. They're good. They're actually really good. They, they're nice to modulate. I noticed that compared to the Honda that we rode this month as well. You can kind of squeeze them and you start to get a little bit of squeeze and then you squeeze them more and you get even more squeeze. It's, it's, it's a nice progressive brake feel rather than just an on-off sort of switch. Aside from the lack of cruise control and the quiet engine character of the new V-Strom 800, the only other downside is the price. If you want a more premium product like this, a more whole package, then you gotta pay the price for that. Not only is this an entirely new platform for Suzuki, so they gotta recoup the development costs there and the development costs with this engine, but they're also just giving you more. So it's really gonna come down to, do you want more of a, a lukewarm adventure bike experience with the V-Strom 650? Or do you want the whole package like this one and the, and the 800 and are you willing to pay for it? For me, if, you, if I lived out in Michigan still, I'd go with the 650 over this bike. Now, if this had cruise control, it might be a little bit different. But for me, I liked the, the character of the 650. It was powerful enough for me, especially once I put that Delkovic exhaust on there and just a few light modifications. It was really a great do-it-all sort of bike for me, and I, when you're when you're able to pick one of those up for what, like seven seventy-five, eight grand or so, compared to the the four thousand more or so that you'd have to pay for this bike, uh, the experience isn't that much better for me to justify it. However, being out here in Southern California now, where I could actually go out and ride some pretty serious trail. I would pay the extra money for this this bike. The the added power for those desert roads where I'm really ringing it out, that would be appreciated. I'd put a different seat on here so it's more comfortable for Alyssa and then we could both take it on, on longer trips. And I'd like being able to have the more advanced suspension for more comfort with longer rides as well as off-road. Well, we've pretty much made it to the coast here. Nice little, little beach, it's cute. Ah, cool, and we're gonna count this as adventuring for today. Not quite seeing the waves that I expected, but we are in a little bit of a, of a cove, so I guess that makes sense there. 
So there it is, the all-new V-Strom 800DE. I, if I had worse things to say about the bike, you know I would say them. Or if you're new to the channel, know that I would say them. I do genuinely think that Suzuki built an awesome product here. And while the ethos is different from the 650, I do think they went in the right direction. It's not as playful of a bike as some of the competitors, but it's serious, it's capable, you got the whole product, and I think a lot of people are going to be really happy with this one. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on my 650 coverage, check the link below. I'll throw some of my ownership updates in there, and uh, we've got our Comparo, we've got the fuel economy test, a lot of good stuff on this bike. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, ride on.